Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope. It's been quite a time ago since I was playing with oscilloscopes. So now we are back. And this one is a Tail Equipment D65. I think this is my number four or five scope from Till Equipment. This one is quite heavy. It's 11 kilos. It uses about 50 watts. It's a two channel oscilloscope and it's from about 1970. Yeah, the bandwidth is a 15 megahertz, uh, minus 3 dB, according to uh, specifications. And the technology here is all transistors. Because 1970, everybody was totally in love with transistors. So this one is full of transistors, so that is nice. Uh, the CRT is a conventional single deflection CRT. So that means it's alternating chop and all that kind of stuff. And then there is a one deflection amplifier. Not like the older uh, previous uh, models with uh, different beams and different deflection systems. So yeah, this is a quite conventional oscilloscope. You can see here, this one was used a lot. So this is channel one, and look at that. So the person who owned this used mainly only one channel. And instead of just carefully working with the switch, it's like the whole fingers just wear down the coating and everything on the aluminum front. And you can also see here, the time base is something that was used quite a lot. Again, coating is completely worn down. <laughs> oh my god. So this one has really seen quite a lot of use. Yeah, I want to open and inspect a little bit before I just plug it in. And this is definitely my number one recommendation when you play around with old stuff you just got unless somebody told you yes it works i just tested it yesterday but if they don't say that definitely let's open and do a deep deep inspection before any kind of power up so this is the rear panel i was about to go and figure out how to unscrew and open this I just wanted to show you this voltage selector. Yeah, we've seen this before, but it's, I just totally love it. Look at the way, look at the way that this works. And it's set for 220, but we got 230. So why didn't people do that? I don't know. Oh yeah, by the way, got to see this as well. How that? How do I? Hmm, that is not supposed to be like that. Yeah, it was supposed to be like that. So the whole idea is you can't unplug the mains connector without removing those two screws first. So there you have it. A very special mains connector. And this one I don't have in my collection of special mains connectors. <laughs> Look at that one absolutely amazing and there's no screws here or anything so you can't just open and service this one and uh, that worries me a little bit because as you can see here if i try and pull this i do see some problems i always like to put in a new cable and stuff like that but anyway not the most easy to plug in. Ooh, there's a little crack here. So what happened now? 
Now it don't fit anymore. Oh, come on, man. Here you go. Yeah, that was nice. So I think I am doing the right thing by taking away the the back cover first, thin, flimsy plastic, and then doing a little inspection here. I think if I remove this, then I can pull down and away the shield. But anyway, there's another thing I wanted to show you while we are here. This is, of course, the vertical deflection. And that will be um, brightness or the blanking signal, right? But look at that. This can't be good. I mean, they're not supposed to touch each other like that, right? So, and that is why it is so important to do those inspections. Why aren't there any little plastic rubber around these? Or why aren't they bent away at least like that? It's all it takes to create a good safe margin i mean it's not that difficult to perform the most fundamental of inspections just saying here's also a little bit of a small margin like that and it's perfectly fine all right now we can continue so that was that easy we are of course in but there is a thick thick layer of smelly dust all over the place. So I better go and give it a big round of compressed air and a little paintbrush. So it's gonna be nice and uh, good smelling again here. <laughs> Ooh. All the transistors, they're in sockets. And that is a classic 1970 thing, because, yeah, all the tubes, they were in sockets. We designed with these the last 30 years, so uh, we better put those transistors in sockets, right? Because you never know if they blow up. Oh, we better go and buy some new ones and stick them in. It just never happened, right? After a little bit of compressed air... Now let's look, yeah, it looks a little bit better. <laughs> I just couldn't get my paintbrush into all the different details, but anyway, it's nice and fine. So this is the the sweep. And here's a little bit interesting solution. Look at this. This is the time base, right? Let's see this one. This is the XY mode. So you move the entire potentiometer like that. Why is it made like that? So you also pull all the wires. See? There's even a little bend here in the solder joint. This is not how you would like it but anyway this lasted 50 years so i think th this is a feature nobody is using so much going in and out of xy mode yeah you can see the cables they move a little bit here and there and yeah that, that was a little funny one yeah that's all the super nasty high voltage uh, there is a nice little warning sticker here with a completely dissolved foam on the back side and that was stinky and sticky and absolutely gross so I had to remove that um, I'm a little bit worried about all the transistors in the sockets because some looks like they're a little bit bent or falling halfway out the sockets yeah this is the left side of the unit that will be channel 1 and channel 2 inputs. Well, that's the different capacitors in the attenuators. And then you can fine tune for all the different ranges and get 
the best high speed performance out of all your different attenuation settings. That is of course the variable. And uh, then here we got the two input amplifiers. And there's a funny thing I want you to see. Can you see this transistor? It's actually a field effect transistor, but it's a two in one matched thermally joined parts like that. So it's, uh, yeah, thermal compensation, stability, and all that kind of good stuff. But the circuit board supports two single FETs as well as a dual. This is why they put those two this close to each other. So so you can use two singles or a double like they've done here. So that is quite cool. I don't think I have seen this solution before, but that is how they did, how they did it here, right? So the two amplifiers goes into a transistor um, oscillator here. So there's a, this is the, um, alternating a chop uh, system and then we got those diodes right here that is the actual analog switch that switches from uh, channel one and channel two and then there's a blanking output that uh, turns on and off the beam and that will be the deflection amplifiers and that is the cable to um, horizontal deflection no that is of course vertical uh, sorry, vertical uh, deflection. I don't see a um, delay line. Normally the delay line can be here, but it can also be in the middle somewhere here, right? But I don't see the delay line. So, uh, and I think I saw something about the delay line in the schematics or in the manual, but that is uh, not visible. So I removed the bottom plate and look what I found. That one is the delay line. And you see the two wires, let me show you here, two wires that twisted back and forward, back and forward, and they cross each turn around here. So it's uh, basically just a very, very long, um, yeah, very, very long, transmission line to generate all that delay needed and it looks a little bit like we got two of them that is a little bit odd why would you have two of them so there's one for one channel and the other one for the other channel why would you do that because you have only one set of deflection plates that is really weird why they wanted to do it like that inside that box is the voltage triple for the high voltage and uh, yeah we continue to see the same solution here see that will be the channels so you push and move the entire potentiometer like that and here huh, a big hefty steel rod yeah Nice. And this is, of course, to combine more features within less knobs on the front. Otherwise, the entire front panel should have been double as big, obviously. So you can push stuff, you can turn stuff, and, and yeah, you see my point here. Yeah, but I think everything here looks nice and fine. I should definitely power this up. So I think I am ready for the first power on. And uh, I believe that here we go. 40 watts and then down to 30. It should be a maximum of 50 watts. And I think here is my, oh, scale illumination even works, cool. And it is in single? No, we want... Why is it in single mode? 
maybe I did. So this is down the trigger. More brightness, focus. I'm a little bit worried about this one. Why is that doing that? So it is in. Well, well. Oh, oi, oi, oi. Did you see? Some stuff happened here, right? Alternating or chop. So this one kind of activates uh, a trick. So it has something to, to do with trick. What is going on here? Well, well, I think I know what is going on. See, now I got a nice line, but it's not responding to my input here. And see if I turn on channel one or channel two, my line here just goes way out of screen. So it is actually possible with this scope to make it sweep like this without actually having channel one or channel two activated. But there's another thing that reveals what is going on and that is the trace rotation. So if you look at the line here, right? If I turn trace rotation to the left, but if I turn it all the way to the right, then it is straight. So this tells me there is a missing voltage because normally, you know, trace ro rotation, that is um, a positive and a negative voltage where you can push or pull um, left or right. You know what I mean? So there's probably a voltage missing and that is revealed by this because I should also be able to move this to the right. And when I at the same time don't have channel one or channel two and I don't have any trigger, I don't, I don't get anything through channel one, two, two, anything. But I have, of course, time base and all that working. So yeah, I think I will start looking for a missing voltage. So I was wrong about the trace rotation. There is, of course, only a positive voltage. And this positive voltage goes to this potentiometer called trace rotation. And uh, if we look a little bit on the schematic, we can see that um, the 110 volts that uh, actually supply the entire um, deflection system go through this uh, potentiometer in a bridge kind of way. And uh, it's just supposed to be like this. So trace uh, rotation can only go in one direction. It can't go um, backward and forward when the current is not enough. And uh, the reason for that that was because of the problem down here. So let me show you something funny. This potentiometer for position in channel one is just completely defaced. I am now in channel two. So if I turn on both of the channels, now I am in chop mode. And um, you can even see the little chop chop. I don't know if you can see that, but I can. See, there's a little bit of some chop interference. But that has something to do with channel one here is, see this potentiometer is not connected at all. And I try to add a lot of contact cleaner and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes I actually do get a, a line from channel one. So that proves that all the electrical stuff is working with channel one, I was hoping. I could get this, this this one is also, see, a mechanical problem here, but this one works on channel two. So this is um, variable on and off, instead of just having this little click. There's also a little click down here, but yeah, that is funny. But anyway, that is definitely the only problem, a mechanical potentiometer here. And if I only have Channel two, all that seems to be good. This is inverse, so you can invert um, channel two. So yeah, I also have a little bit of uh, problems with the uh, triggering. Triggering here on channel two, it's not the most perfect way that it works. You see, <laughs> what do you think about that, huh? So 
<laughs> of course, this thing is 50 years old and uh, all the contacts there are just a little bit tired. So if I try and adjust the time base for almost the correct speed, it should be possible to figure out how to get the trimmer working. And, and this is trick level. I should be in only channel two. I should be in internal uh, if this one is out, right? But I just don't get a lot of uh, response on anything here. See here, oh, here we are. Yeah, here we go, finally. Finally we got it. And then, yay, we got a tricked signal. Happy, happy. So yeah, that is how this fantastic thing almost works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't want to bore you with a lot more. Um, it's just a real fantastic transistor scope. 50 years old. And all that. So, thank you very much for watching. See you again real soon. Bye-bye.